And now, Lord Starfish's epic tale of epic proportions. Kasumi's epic quest. A My Little Pony and Minecraft crossover. Chapter 3, The Breaking of the Fellowship, D colon. Hey, um, so I got a review asking why this is listed as My Little Pony fanfic when there has so far been no My Little Pony in it. Well, suffice to say that while I haven't gotten to it yet, something from My Little Pony Friends with Magic will play a very important role in this story before it ends. But also, let me say, I never intended for this story to be all that long, and I've already got most of it written out, so it shouldn't take too long. Actually, this chapter already marks the halfway point. I wanted it to be short so as to ensure I would even be able to get to the end before running into a massive writer's block, which happened with the other fic I've got uploaded there. I still want to finish that one as well, but I just keep getting stuck whenever I try writing on it. To be honest though, I would rather have had this listed as a general crossover without specifying fandoms at all, but since the site didn't seem to accept that, I chose to list the two most important fandoms instead. Minecraft because of Steve, and MLP because of that other thing I haven't gotten to yet. In the meantime though, here, an uncredited appearance by Zagora. But this AN is getting way too long, so on with the story! The trio rode through the desert on their horses until finally they saw on the equivalent location seeker that they would emerge outside the mountain if they built a portal here. So Kasumi pulled the required blocks out of her bag and built a portal there. Unfortunately for them, just as they were about to pass through it, the sun set below the horizon and a bunch of zombies and skeletons and an enderman spawned. Watch out, it's an enderman. Steve said, whatever you do, don't look it in the eyes. Then Kasumi looked it in the eyes. Then the Enderman went batshit and tried to brutally murder her. Kasumi pulled out her rubber bands and tried to strike the Enderman, but to no avail. Kiyoshi also tried shooting it with his arrows, but it just kept teleporting around, and so the hits kept missing. Steve, a little help here, Kiyoshi said. But if I attack it, it'll start trying to brutally murder me too. Steve said, and instead focused on single-handedly fighting off the zombies and skeletons, which he was really good at. Gah! Do you know of any weaknesses in this thing? Kasumi, who was fighting a losing battle against the Enderman's brutal murder attempts, said, Well, they're deathly afraid of water, Steve said. Well, why didn't you say so sooner? Kasumi said, and spat at the Enderman, who proceeded to lose all interest in Kasumi and her friends as it teleported away to escape the horrors of the water. What? That's how Endermen work. And so, once Steve had single-handedly killed all the zombies and skeletons, our brave heroes stepped through the portal back into the normal world, where they promptly found the ground crumbling beneath their feet as they fell into a bottomless hole. Thankfully, as the hole was in fact bottomless rather than just continuing into the Earth's core or something, Kazumi had plenty of time to come up with a flawless logic trademark plan to get them out of it. So she pulled Spider-Man out of her bag and had him grab onto them and swing them to safety with his web-shooting skills. He carried them back out of the bottomless hole. Thanks, Spider-Man, Kazumi said. You're welcome, I guess, random girl whom I've ever met, Spider-Man said. Anyway, I have to go help Batman. Batman? Why? Kiyoshi said. Then Batman came flying by in his Batmobile, followed by Iron Man, who was flying around chasing him because Batman and Spider-Man had stolen his mask and he wanted it back, so he was firing his laser at them. And one of them hit cat number two, and so Kasumi pulled out a jetpack from her bag and flew up to Iron Man and kicked the ever-loving shit out of him for killing her loyal companion. Well, I was going to help him fight Iron Man, but it seems I no longer need to, Spider-Man said. Well, I should still probably get back to New York. Rumor has it that, like, Twelve different supervillains are wrecking the place at the same time right now. Then he swung off in the direction of New York. One extremely emotional funeral for cat number two later, our heroes once again continued their quest. You know, it occurs to me, Kiyoshi said, you have a bag that holds everything. Why do we even need to go to the book's hideout and rescue your dad? Can't you just pull him out of the bag? No, Kasumi said. Okay, Steve said. What, no explanation for why you can't, Kiyoshi said. Because that wouldn't be as exciting, Kasumi loudly declared with flawless logic, trademark. You're stupid, Kiyoshi said. No, I'm not. I know how the world works far better than either of you do, Kasumi said with an enormous and most definitely not conceited at all smile. So Kasumi, Steve, Kiyoshi, and cat number three continued continuing their quest. And after not long, they came to a crossroad where there was a sign hung up saying, Hideout of the Evil Book Clan. I see what they're playing at, Kiyoshi said. They're trying to mislead us by pointing in two entirely opposite directions, hoping that we'll take the wrong one. Nope. Both directions are equally true, Kasumi said. 
How? Well, you see, Kasumi began, but then Kiyoshi interjected and said, Actually, on second thought, don't. It's probably going to be some completely preposterous nonsense statement again, isn't it? Indifferent to Kiyoshi's complaint, Katsumi continued, Since the Earth is round, that means that whether we walk to the left or right here, eventually we would reach the hideout as my map showed it is located in the precise direction that the right arrow is pointing. Kiyoshi was baffled. He actually followed that reasoning perfectly fine. So we should go to the right, then. Oh no, the logical thing to do in this situation would be to continue straight forward, Kasumi said, and Kiyoshi was once again baffled, so order was restored to the universe. Why is that, Kasumi? Steve said curiously. Well, it wouldn't be very interesting if our quest just ended now, would it? We gotta build up to the confrontation, each of us going through personal trials and overcoming our flaws and growing as people, Kasumi said, with flawless logic, trademark. And then they went forward and each went through a grand personal trial, which they overcame and became better people in the span of ten minutes. You just totally half-assed those personal trials, didn't you? Said a talking lampshade hanging by the wayside. What? We're totally better people now. I've overcome my inability to swim, Kiyoshi has come to terms with his homosexuality, and Steve has learned to play the drums, Kasumi told the talking lampshade. Yeah, well, nobody ever mentioned any of you struggling with those, so it's entirely moot, the talking lampshade said. Okay, fine, Kasumi said. Let's go go through more personal trials and grow as people in ways that other people will actually give a damn about. Who are these other people, Kiyoshi said. Your mom, Kasumi maturely and intelligently informed, responded. Remind me why we're friends again, Kiyoshi said. Because I'm cute, Kasumi said, attempting to invoke flawless logic, trademark, but she forgot that Kyoshi now had a perfectly logical counter-argument. I'm gay. And then to further denounce Kasumi's non-flawless logic, trademark, he punched her in the nose so that her face was all covered in blood and stuff, so she really wasn't particularly cute at all. Well, can't argue with that, Kasumi said. And that day, she learned that she could always be right all the time. She could potentially be wrong roughly 0.0001% of the time. The rest of the time, she was totally right, though. That life lesson still doesn't really change anything, the talking lampshade pointed out. Oh, shut up, you, Katsumi said and sicked cat number three on the talking lampshade, which ran away screaming. And that day, the talking lampshade learned that one does not disagree with Katsumi, because she is a very sore loser. Anyway, so now that we have established that I have no reason to like you, I'm gonna ditch you now, Kiyoshi said, and then he left. Kasumi made sad face, and then put a band-aid on her nose to stop looking all covered in blood and stuff. Then she and Steve kept moving forward in the wrong direction to have more character-building trials. In time, they reached a hut in a swamp. Kasumi knocked on the door. Who is it that goes there, and what business has brought you here? A voice said. Uh, I'm Kasumi, and this is my friend Steve. And we are here on a quest to save my father from the evil books, Kasumi said. Your quest is honorable and grand. However, your methods I do not understand, the voice said. Then the door opened, and they saw that the owner of the voice was the talking zebra. What do you mean, Miss Talking Zebra? You are walking the wrong way. Hard to save him like that, eh? The talking zebra said. But I have to go through grand personal trials to overcome and become a better person through them, Kasumi said. But walking away from your goal as you are doing will only lead to your father's undoing, the zebra said. You just rhyme doing with doing, Kasumi pointed out, with flawless logic, trademark. And thus the talking zebra's entire argument was invalid. And then she learned that one must never trust talking zebras. Truly this knowledge will serve me well in the future, Kasumi said. Now come on, Steve. Let's keep going. And so they continued walking in the wrong direction in order to have more irrelevant adventures, and then they got punched in the face for calling Kasumi's adventures irrelevant, so never mind that, she is totally justified in going north when the book's castle serves southeast.